Good morning. Welcome to the conversation on TOS Television Network. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning here in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. And I am Adey Suwasi. And I am Merciful Lajinimo. Good morning. Good morning, Merciful. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Great. All right, guys, you know that before we kickstart the show for our part, we'll be bringing you the quote of the day. So Tuesday morning motivation there from Brian Tracy says, look, don't be scared to move out of your comfort zone. I think I said it before that nothing new happens in your comfort zone. Even though Merciful feels like he can be comfortable and to do new and great things. Is right? it, it's pretty much a mixture of everything, mm -hmm. you know, being in your comfort zone, experiencing challenges, just know that it's a process, whatever happens, mm -hmm. just make sure you're growing. Mm. Whatever is happening, make sure that you're moving, you know, mm. it's like metamorphosis. Mm. Moving from a, an area of lower concentration to a, an area of a higher concentration. Mm -hmm. so if you're having a, the kind of challenge that's happened before, no, you're supposed to be more than that. So yeah. just ensure you, you just keep growing, even if you're comfortable doing it. Yeah. Just but, make sure you're but, growing. But Brian Tracy is saying, don't be scared to get uncomfortable. Don't be scared to move out of, you know, try out new things, try out new terrains. Don't be scared. Just put yourself out there. True. I think that's what she's trying to say. True. All right, guys. Okay, so we move straight into development across Africa, starting from South Africa, where a fire has raised um, Table Mountain National Park. That's one of the heritage sites in South Africa. And then no fewer than nine buildings were destroyed in a bushfire on the slopes of the World Heritage Site, Table Mountain National Park in South Africa, as I said earlier. The fire that raged out of control in strong winds on Sunday also caused extensive damage to the University of Cape Town. TOS News gathered that the fire was still not, you know, doused um, as at yesterday, Monday. The inferno destroyed part of the restaurant next to a monument to British colonist Cecil Rhodes, houses and several buildings of the prestigious Cape Town University below, including the library. This has led to exodus of hundreds of students from their residences walking along the main roads to escape the smoke to find shelter. A statement by the university's Jaga Library Executive Director Ujala Sapkur said, we can confirm the reading room is completely gutted and thankfully the fire detection system is placed, triggered the fire shutters, thereby preventing the spread of the fire to other parts of the library. Some of our valuable collections have been lost. However, a full assessment can only be done once the building has been declared safe and we can enter the building. I'm just very glad that no lives are lost, yeah, no life was lost in, in all of this. Quite sad that, you know, a heritage site was destroyed. I don't know how, how you know, much stuff. would mm. the damage. Nobody, we still don't know how the fire started, but no lives are lost and that's just one. Definitely. So it's an eye opener for other countries, you know, companies and any house, any building at all to have a, like a fire extinguisher yes, nearby. So fire you can quell small fires before they become, become large, big. Yeah. All right, um, still on a sad note, 11 people have died in Egypt's train derailment. And no fewer than 11 people died while and 98 others were wounded in the train derailment on Sunday in the Delta city of Tok, north of the Egyptian capital Cairo. Egyptian health minister said in a statement, a total of 60 ambulances have been sent to the scene and the wounded have been transferred to three public hospitals, the ministry said in a statement. The accident happened after four carriages of the train coming from Cairo to the delta city of Mansoura derailed, the Egyptian Ministry of Transportation said. And President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has since ordered formation of a committee to probe the reasons for the accident. Meanwhile, Public prosecutor said an investigation into the accident is underway with the train driver and his assistant, as well as eight other officials at the Tok train station. Very sad news, actually. I mean, that would have been a disaster. It's not that like it would have been, it was actually a disaster. Yeah. And like, I don't like to you know, hear situations, we come out and reach situations and we're like, this life's a loss, this amount of lives are lost. Like, I don't know, it just throws me off balance a little bit because, you know, those are human beings, mm -hmm. you know. They were heading somewhere and they didn't even get there and everybody knows what happens. It's definitely it, a gory sight to, yeah. to like behold, for seeing a train, you know, derail from derail. the track. You don't know, you can't control you it. You can't, exactly. Very so sad. we don't know, is it an infrastructure deficit? Is it something that the driver did? Is it technical something. issues? It's, 
Wow. Okay. All right. Moving over to Malawi, where the Malawian president, Takwara, has dismissed the Labour Minister and other senior officials. Now, uh, Lazarus Shakura dismissed the Minister of Labour, Ken Kandodo, and some senior officials over alleged misuse of COVID-19 funds. President Chakwara said the action followed an audit he had channeled into the spending of 6.2 billion Malawian kwacha for COVID residents. The Labour Minister has been accused of using the COVID funds to pay for travel expenses to South Africa. The President stated that although the Minister had paid back the funds, but the money was still not available for use when needed the most. He said there will be no sacred cows, not noting that more than a dozen senior officials involved in the audit report, including in his office and the entire cabinet, had already been arrested. Now, this, I, I, I don't know when African leaders would actually just do things right. Corruption, I think, it cuts across every African, every African country. country. Like, these monies were meant for certain purpose. We know COVID-19 is an emergency, a world mm -hmm. emergency. And then they were found to disperse for these purposes. Emergency uh, COVID-19 funds, maybe to buy um, relief materials or, or to buy palliatives or, or, or like to buy vaccines. vaccines but you decided to use them for your personal travel expenses. Okay, he returned the money. But according to what they said, it was not available when they needed it. So maybe when they needed to purchase items, the monies were not available. So you returning the money at that time really didn't do anything. Like I always say, corruption is the root cause of all of the issues we're facing. It is. As a country, as, as a continent. As a continent. People should begin to, you know, realize that they are in power to serve. Mm -hmm. And if someone can re realize that he's in power to serve, to a long extent, all of this will be cut short. To a, large, to a large extent, because we're talking about de development. It starts from the person. Mm -hmm. It starts from, from your mind, how mm -hmm. you see things. Mm -hmm. So I, I look forward to, to a time where we'll come to the show and say, look, uh, we, have, we have been cleared our corruption index now. That really Very low. low. And African countries, you know, they have understood the need to serve they need for you know to focus more on humanity anyway, than, de than them personal. themselves. So it's just it's, it's very sad. I, in, my, in my head, like why reading that story, I was like, how do you even think? Like, how did you come up with the whole idea that you can actually spend the money meant for such emergency? How do you even come up with it? And it wasn't even for maybe health health reasons. Maybe you had to spend it on your health. It was for travel expenses, just Problem. pleasure. It's actually very, very disheartening. Mm -hmm. All right, talking about COVID-19, we're going to go on a break now to bring you a COVID-19 update from across Africa. Welcome back. That was COVID-19 update from, you know, Ghana around various African countries by the African Center for Disease Control. And you already know what I'm going to say at this point. I'm still not encouraged. I'm still not out here with the numbers. So as always, I'm going to tell you that we still need to do more. I mean, we've been doing more. I know that lots of persons have been getting vaccinations. I think in Nigeria, over 1 million people have gotten vaccinated, which is quite encouraging, but we still need to do more. You still need to get more people still need to get vaccinated. And if your country or your state has not started rolling out vaccines yet, you should you know, prevent yourself, protect yourself, protect the next persons, take precautions. Every, we all know the precautions by now because we've been singing it for a whole year, over mm -hmm. a year, so we all know what to do and all of that stuff so just do your part as i always say and say so that you and the next person can be saved i mean a lot of persons have lost loved ones colleagues and all of that and we don't want to keep seeing that we don't want to you know keep seeing increasing number of deaths we don't want to see africa record third wave of covid 19 and also we don't want to hear about covid 2022 so just do your bit and i'll do my bit and then africa can be free you know COVID-19. All right. Okay. So we're going to go on a break now. And when we come back, we'll be taking you through uh, what the newspapers are saying this morning. North to South Africa. <laughs> East to West Africa.
TOS TV Network is your digital first Pan African news network, bringing you news from across the continent. Visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com and follow us on social media at TOS TV Network on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Watch us on television, channel 138 on TSTV Africa. North to South Africa. TOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that questions the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity. Welcome back to The Conversation, showing on your digital first Pan-African news network, TOS Television. And um, don't forget, you can always be a part of the show by following us across all our social media handles at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And of course, like stream our programs on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. And don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube page, TOS TV Network. Is that time where we'll bring you some of the national dailies, you know, for this morning, the headlines that's making the rounds for this morning. And we'll begin with Blueprint from the very top, IMF Nigeria to implement energy subsidy removal. That particular story can be found on page 23 of the Blueprint. And underneath that story, Access Bank sets up plans for further acquisitions. And that can be found on page 22. And I'm just underneath the Blueprint tag there, Autonomy Governors Bow to Jusun comments implementation May. We have two riders in that story, judiciary workers, lawyers protest, and the second rider, autonomy non-negotiable, coming from the Senate. And eight die in Anambra gunmen courtist duel. That story can be found on page eight of the blueprint. The very gaping headline there is Senate on insecurity. Nigeria under siege of murderous non-state actors. We have three riders on that story. The first one says says 350 million or 500 million West African, West Africa's illegal weapons in our country. And the second rider is, we either take measures or watch them overrun us. And the third is, gunmen kill three, bandits, doctors, not in Kaduna State. And that can be found on page six. And then in the pictures of the day, well, if you see the first picture, you know, the Vice President Briefing, President Mohamed Buhari after his return from London, United Kingdom, and the Jusian workers, you know, um, on strike there. The story is on Conchisha's killings. Monarch's deputy local government chair, councillor, arrested at security meeting. And um, the writer on the letters, nine of 12 weapons recovered. That story can be found on page 14 of the blueprint. Nigeria's foreign policy must address emerging challenges. That's coming from Femi Bajabiamila, and that can be found on page nine. Asu reject Mackinday's step aside order on Lautech vice chancellor. And it's still can be found on 14, page 14 of the blueprint. CSO's clear pentami of religious extremism allegations. And that can be found on page 9. And the very last headline for the blueprint newspaper for this morning is uh, Abia Northern Community Not Harboring Criminals in Cattle Market. And that can be found on page 14 of the blueprint newspaper. Mm. Moving away from the blueprint newspaper to the Daily Trust um, newspaper, static from the very top as well. Expect judicial autonomy next month, uh, says governors. And then beside that one, five killed as gunmen attack police headquarters in Anambra state. And then on the very gaping headline, um, Daily Trust newspaper, inflation, Nigerians grown as food prices skyrocket. Food inflation mount 22.95%. 
that's coming from the National Bureau of Statistics. And then underneath that one, workers lament static pay amidst price hike. And then just underneath the picture of the day where we're seeing in schools resum resuming, um, I think yesterday for the second term, Pantami, when the past eats the future. And then just underneath that one, no increase in petrol price in May. That's coming from the NNPC. Will stabilize our region, Buhari tells Niger president. And then the last headline on the there says, Unijos staff, students protest suspension of VC selection process. These are the headlines on the Daily Chess newspaper this morning. We move over to the Business Day newspaper, beginning from the very gaping headline there. In search of more money, Nigeria changes all reform. That particular story can be found on page 31 of the business there. Don't forget, you can always monitor the market um, from the very top of the business day newspaper right there. And we see another story just beside the, um, the main story. Naira adjustment end to subsidy to add 200 billion Naira to FAAC monthly. And that can be found on page 31 of the business day. Okay, moving over to the very last um, newspaper we're going to be looking at this morning. The first um, rider, that's on the Nigerian News Direct. The first story there says, two policemen die as hoodlums raise Anambra Police Zono headquarters. And then beside that one, Sawo Luke comments, police officer assaulted in viral video. Beside that, starting 2021 strong, UBA records 27% PAT growth, 20.5% return on... Um, investment and then on petrol that's on the very gaping headline there petrol no increase in x depot price in may that's coming from the nmpc that story is on page 16 of the nigerian news direct and just underneath the first picture of the day nasa are to introduce land reforms to remove bottlenecks in ease of doing business that story is on page three judiciary financial autonomy governors bow to pressure fix may for implementation that's also on page three of the Nigerian News Direct newspaper, OAGF to assist NEITI in tracking oil and gas revenue. That's also on page three of the Nigerian News Direct. And then just moving over to the second picture of the day with underneath it, I will change the narratives of Nigeria's internal security. I, acting IGP vows as it meets Buhari, that's on page two. Failed zone out Congress, PDP constitutes Northwest Caretaker Committee, also on page three. And then the last headline, on the Nigerian News Direct newspaper this morning says, by Yelsat, you prioritize health sector investment. That's coming from Dr. Deary, and that's on page 23 of the Nigerian News Direct. All these stories you can find inside the Nigerian News yeah, Direct. Those are some headlines there. So yes. among all of this story, I think the one that caught my attention mm. the most was the one talking about food inflation. Yes. You know, we're in a, we're in a stage where we're always you know, talking about, look, the money we're paying civil servants and workers in Nigeria, it's not enough. It's not enough. We're even trying to make sure the minimum wage still cuts across all of the states in, yeah. in Nigeria. Now we're having the issue of food inflation. How do Nigerians, how would they survive? Yeah. That's the question I keep asking. Like, I mean, we're all of this rising, because we had a guest talk, talk about this talk issue about yes, yesterday, yesterday yeah. on the show. So I'm, I'm, I'm really worried. <laughs> Really, that, that's I think it should just it should just be it's either we, we find a way to balance the economy where we have to have reduction in the number the the prices of food items and all of that, or we increase the revenues of mm -hmm. workers and all of that stuff because we have so to balance it, it out. Definitely. You can't have people earning the same thing they've been earning for years, and, and then we have things keep rising. So basically, what they actually earn cannot even measure up to. You cannot even buy. It's like probably two years ago, you can buy maybe a, a food item or something that can sustain you for maybe 2,000, 3,000 naira. And now you cannot even just buy one item for that, that, you know, that amount. It doesn't balance it It's out. really, really sad. And if yes. even this morning, while well, on my way here in the city of Abuja, we see there was so much queues, you know. You know the, we had people the, queuing yes. to buy fuel, and yeah. I was like, what really is the issue? Before now, we spoke about the price hike, and you know, mm. management came out. Mm -hmm. The government said, "Look, they're, they're not increasing the fuel." And NMPC is they're, saying today that they're not increasing. They're not know, increasing price, the fuel. So, yeah. but, but what is hap happening? Why are they hoarding the fuel? Yes. Why are they not selling it out? Is the question we keep asking. That's now, the we issue we're talking about. All of these, yeah. Yeah. That is it, and it all stems from corruption. Corruption yeah. is the root cause. <laughs> yes, exactly. If you're really asking them, like, really, what is the what issue? is the issue? Yeah, we can't really say what the issue is because this person is saying, well, "Look, there's no price hike," but these guys are selling for like. like 
hardening because mm -hmm. and the only reason they hard fall is because probably they, they have yes. an intuition that it's going to be it's going so they can now hide, so they can, you know, put it yeah, on exactly. start selling so expensive. There's, there's, there's an imbalance in the economy this time like an imbalance and then we just hope that's sorted out something is done because uh, you know poverty index the nigerian poverty mm -hmm. index is rising and i it's think this rising. is one of the reasons why it's rising because yeah. what you earn is not even enough to actually sustain you Something and then the, 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 there's inflation and all of that stuff. I mean, inflation rose to 22%. Do you know mm. what that is? That is wow. killing. Wow. Please uh, just get, you know, be informed of what's happening in the country. Grab a copy of uh, any newspapers around you and just you know, read to get yourself you know, informed of what's happening. That's the most you can take on newspaper review for the segment of the conversation this morning. We'll go on a break now. When we return, um, at this while, I'll be taking you through what's trending on social media. Welcome back. It's still the conversation on TOS Television Network. And you know it's about that time where I take you through my favorite segment of the conversation. That is where I bring you what has been trending on social media or what's trending on social media in the last 24 hours. Now, before we get into all of that, I always tell you, you can be a part of the conversation by streaming the conversation on www.tostvnetwork.com. Also follow TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, subscribe on YouTube, TOS TV Network, so you don't miss out on the amazing lineups that we have there for you. Okay, now let's come back into what's trending on social media. Now, we all know the Judge Ford trial has been going on for, I think, a couple of weeks now. And then, so, I think they're going to deliver a verdict today. And because of that, Judge Ford, you know, the hashtag um, Judge Ford has been trending on social media. So, I'm going to read out a few tweets, you know, to that regard for you. The first one is from a speaker, Pelochi, and she says... Today is a solemn day as the closing arguments are presented in the Judge Floyd murder trial. I commend the Floyd family for their dignified calls for justice, which were heard around the world. Let us be prayerful that the truth will prevail and honor will, and we honor Judge Floyd's memory. And then uh, the other one is from Asante Sanders, and it says, Justice for Judge Floyd, Adam Toledo, Dante Wright, and too many before them must include a national transformation that brings accountability for all officers who murder, including firings, criminal, and civil penalties. The next one is from at Katie Fang. She says, Blackwell, Judge Floyd lived for 17,026 days with all of his health issues each day and every day, and he didn't die until May 25, 2020, when he encountered Derek Chauvin. And then the last um, tweet is from at Bernice King. And she says, I am praying for Judge Floyd's family as the world awaits a verdict. His family would prefer to see and hug him. 
That's why justice is beyond verdict. Justice is a continuum that includes dismantling systems that destroy and dehumanize human beings, then feign innocence. How does hmm. this make you feel that? Now, yeah. knowing that yeah. we're going to, there's going to be a verdict today. The world has been waiting for it. The whole Black Lives Matter movement, justice for George Floyd, all of that. We're going to get a verdict for all of that today. What, 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 what is your anticipation? What are you looking at? I, I feel very sad for his family. I feel like we are, all of this, you know, all of this processes, this activities, this event mm. is all, you know, you bring in the name again, over, over, over again. and so over you keep, again. You, you, you keep reminding Relieving. yourself what has happened, yeah. what, how it has affected. So yeah. it's his family, his, 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 his close friends, his, the relatives is what I feel for the most. All of this has been happening. People have been saying, look, why is all these actions? Why is all this event? Why can't we just say something? Well, yeah, we all on, understand the place of justice, justice and, and everything. Yeah. But I really do hope that justice prevails, whatever mm. happened, mm. whatever happened. Because like the tweet said, um, the first person was like, he has been living before now. There was yes. no issue of health. So until now, there's a new, there's a whole, that, there's a whole ball game of, oh, he had some health challenges. So mm. the, the, the whole killing was not because of, he was not. And I was like, what's happening? Really what's happening, because I'm, I'm very sad, because everybody had to see that video. Imagine there was no footage. That's Look, what I keep asking we, myself. We had footage. We had an eyewitness, footage and it's still really. taking this mm -hmm. long, you know, to get a verdict. I do understand that they said every, everyone is proving, um, everyone is innocent, has proving proving guilty. Proving guilty. They give you a chance to actually prove that, oh, you actually didn't deliberately do all of this stuff, too. We actually see the place of justice, this justice system in all of this. But my, my, my hope, is that we really do the world really does you know get justice for for ju um, judge Floyd because as um, one of the tweets um, said that justice is like a system that that's accountable national transformation across borders where we don't see people do stuff and then blame it on oh I didn't know, I didn't know or yeah. just fake innocence we see like think people are held accountable for their, for their actions. actions whether on a minimal scale or on, on a bigger scale but just hold them accountable let them know that they cannot actually just do stuff like and this get and get it. away with it or you cannot just come and say oh i couldn't have just deliberately done it i didn't mm -hmm. do it deliberately and they're like oh yeah i don't think that happened deliberately mm -hmm. so we just see you know because a, a, a verdict a justice for george floyd is going to be like a huge leap you know in mm -hmm. the whole black Lives matter uh, mm -hmm. movement in the whole anti-racism worldwide protests and movements, yes yeah. exactly so i just hope the verdict we get today is going to bring us some sort of peace and some soccer to Judge Floyd's family and everyone who had to witness, you know, the murder and everyone who had to stand, you know, on the dock for testify and all of that stuff. I just hope we get justice across by now. So if people we just get to, so. you know, peace. We Finally, so. <laughs> get this. Okay, that's the most you can take on this segment and you know what's trending on social media segment of the conversation. We are going to go on a break now, and when we come back, it's a bit time to bring you the big story. You're welcome back to the conversation showing on your digital first Pan African news network. It's that time of the show where we bring you the crux of the conversation, and that is the big story. Today we'll be discussing the Jusun strike, uh, the NBA strike, and its implications. Uh, it has been two weeks since the commencement of the indefinite strike by staff of the Judicial Staff Union of Nigeria, as the Jusun. The union uh, is currently protesting the failure of the government to grant the judiciary financial autonomy despite all of its efforts. Uh, since then, courts have been shut, making it difficult to get documents, warrant, affidavits, and even prosecute offenders. Now, in an earlier statement by the public relations of the Nigerian police force, Frank Mba, he decried the growing number of inmates currently in police custody, adding that their detention facilities might become very stretched if the striking workers do not return to work soonest. Um, with access to the judiciary becoming almost impossible, the Nigerian Bar Association, in a joint rally with Jusun on Monday, that's yesterday, the 19th of April, also threatened to embark on a solidarity strike if the government fails to match its word with actions. Now, in light of the foregoing, where does the average Nigerian seek justice following the possibility of a total shutdown of the Nigerian judiciary arm? Joining us to discuss more on this um, is barrister Ezekiel Ugochuku, and he's a legal practitioner. You're welcome to the show. Good morning. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for so, um, first of all, can we make sense of all of this? The strike and everything, what's really happening? Yes, um, the situation is, um, uh, sorry to, uh, to say that uh, you, uh, you, are, you are quite not correct, okay. uh, because um, as I've always said in different, on different platforms, the issue is not about implement. The issue is just yeah, we the Jason strike shouldn't be to ask the, uh, the executive to implement because naturally that sh that is what should be in place mm. because it's just like asking the president to be the president of Nigeria because mm. every action, every institution of government is actually uh, a creation of law, the judiciary. The executive, the legislative arm um, is a creation of, of the, our constitution. Now, what has happened, what is happening, or what happened is a usurpation of the powers, or what should ordinarily go to the judiciary by the executive. Under section 121 of the constitution, the, uh, uh, the judiciary is supposed to, on paper, be an independent arm of government. What it means is that the judiciary ought to have every revenue accruable to the judiciary directly into an account of the judiciary. But un unfortunately, because of our long experience with, this, uh, with soldiers, with the military, the, the, uh, the revenue accruable to the judiciary has been diverted and oftentimes is as if members of the judiciary go hand, uh, hand, hand in check, begging the executive to give them something out of money that is, supposed, uh, that is supposed to be theirs as of right. That is the issue. And now, over the years, uh, there were protests, there were some kind of, uh, uh, in fact, members of the judiciary, the judges, uh, I will not say, they, as I said yesterday, somewhere on another platform, I said, they will beg for everything in Nigeria. They've been begging. At the time they went to court, they got judgment, and the court said, sorry, this is what ought to be. They interpreted section 121 of the Constitution and said, if each, uh, every single revenue from the consolidated revenue account of the Federation, at the end of the month, ought to go straight to the account of the judiciary, the head of the judiciary, that is the Supreme Court, if there is anyone going to the states, to the various state high courts. It is not when, uh, when uh, a judge needs a car, he will go to he will, uh, the chief, the CJ, that the chief judge of the state will go to the governor begging, uh, please, uh, uh, so, so, and so number of judges do not have vehicles. Now, the, the normal thing ought to be, just like you have budget mm. for, uh, for the executive, you should have budget for the, uh, for the judiciary and then the legislature. So that is the, that is the, uh, that basically is the problem. But the governors keep, Money meant for the judiciary for themselves, and if you need anything, I'll give you a, a practical example in Ebony State. Mm. Some magistrates, many magistrates do not even have a car, they come from their homes on bikes mm. to preside over matters. What it means is that if I, if for instance, if I'm a magistrate, if I jail a criminal today and then the next morning, he, of course, he knows where I enter bike or where I enter a car to go to court, he will just wait for me and kill me. If you recall, about um. Uh, I think uh, early this year, magistrates, sitting magistrates, protesters on the streets of Abakaliki because they do not have cares, the allowances are not paid, and something like that. That is the issue. Okay. Okay, but we do know that um, Nigerians, all nine Nigerians are at the receiving end of all of this. And when Mersfo was reading out the statistics earlier, he did talk about of a crowded cell. We do know that we have people who are waiting in line to, to, to get justice, you know, all of that stuff. What happens to the team in Nigerians who are caught in between all of this? Yes, uh, as I speak to you here, I am equally um, disturbed because I, for the past two weeks, I haven't gone to court. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be in court this morning. To, I was supposed to be in court. In fact, I have a judgment that is uh, the, um, the, I was supposed to be uh, delivered on Friday. That is the issue of uh, the, IG, the tenure elongation of the former IGP, mm -hmm. that is uh, Adamu. Yeah. We, uh, we took that matter, I think we, we took arguments on that matter on the second, uh, the second of first of last month. The matter was adjourned to 16. 
for judgment. That's inter another interpretation of the Constitution. So the country uh, was awaiting that judgment, which will be a, a very big uh, monumental judgment and decision on our Constitution. But as a result of this strike, nothing happened. Nigerians are waiting. So uh, that's to betray the fact that the right shoes, people are suffering. So I, I have a bell application that um, I moved before the strike. Uh, the, it was adjourned for, judge, uh, for ruling on the bell application. There's nothing you can do. The judge cannot sit without the registrars. And then the man is in prison. He's, he's been in Kujia prison for, before we made the bell application, he was there for about uh, three months. Mm -hmm. Now, and this is for an offense that is ordinarily bellable. Mm. So now I have, uh, when you talk of uh, civil matters, there are claimants who are on our necks. There's nothing you can do. Personally, as a, uh, as a lawyer, not, not just as a litigant, because I can be a lawyer and a litigant at the same time, I have my personal issues. I can't even go to court. So it's a, it's a very, a very, very disturbing circumstance. That's why we went to the National Assembly yesterday. I was there to protest yesterday. Mm. Because the issue, though some of my colleagues will argue that um, we shouldn't disturb the state government, that is the federal government under Section 81 of the Constitution that has the right to pay, uh, that has the, uh, the, um, the duty to pay uh, members of the judiciary and all that. But the issue is the country is collapsing. The thing now is um, if we have different unions going on strike at mm. almost at the same time. time. So is there no alternative? Because we're talking about judiciary, exactly. meaning people who you know have a crucial ac part. access to law. They, in fact, they some even you know they are placed at the top of the food chain. So if they can't go on strike, every other person can go on strike. Are, are there no alternative ways that we can make the demands known to the the, the government other than going on strike? Let's strike. As I said, uh, my last statement was that the, the true position of things is that this country is collapsing. Mm. The country is collapsing. That is the honest When you say truth. the country is collapsing, what, if you, what you have mean? if you have three arms of government and a particular arm of government is shut down for two weeks, it means that out of three, three legs of a stool. One is removed. One leg is removed for no two weeks. No more balance. Something tragically is wrong with that country. We we are not if, not talking of judiciary alone. Yeah. We're talking of the legislature. Mm -hmm. They embarked on a strike some time ago, as we speak today. The meetings they they, they are not equal. They are not equally comfortable with the situation. So in all, you find out that. We just have one leg mm. of the stool trying to hold one leg trying to hold the stool. So the country is collapsing. And if something is not done urgently, we we'll have a failed state in our hands. Okay. How how does this whole issue affect the NBA, the Nigerian Bar Association? Because I know that they're also saying they're going to embark on a yeah. strike. Um, solidarity maybe with Jasun and all of that. So how does it affect Of them? course, I, uh, the, the, I, as a member of MBA, mm. what do I do? What else do I do if, if, the, if the courts are closed? I don't go to court. I don't earn a living. Mm. I go back home to my family. I need to pay school fees. So if I do not have access to the only institution that puts food on my table, mm. it affects me. So what's so are they going on a strike to protect coming back to work, opening the courts, or they're joining? You know, outside, the don't forget, don't forget that outside going to court, there are other matters, arbitration, mm -hmm. and all that that members of the MBAs, like some of us, do. So if you close down the major part of the major institution where we earn a living, why not? Let's just go home. Mm -hmm. Okay. It means that I shouldn't even be here with you at this hour. I should just go home and sleep mm -hmm. because there's nothing, there's nothing to, to hope on anymore. Don't, and don't equally forget that 70 percent or about 60 percent of members of Jusen our lawyers, yes. the registrars we are talking about, the judges we are talking about, the people that, that we are fighting for are all lawyers. So the solidarity strike is just uh, uh, to, to help drive home the point mm. that our brothers, our colleagues who are not 
in private practice are suffering. So it's just like the, uh, those in, in public service are the ones on strike now. And some of us in private practice are saying, sorry, we understand with them. And if you don't give them what they want, we are equally going to join them. Mm. So at the end of it all, we are all one. Okay. Okay, but I, I read across the dailies this morning that the governors are saying they're going to start implementation in May. That's next month. So does this mean that they're going to be like the strike? You right? know, the it's, it's so it's so it's so annoying. It's so annoying that yeah, someone will say we'll start implementation. Yeah, somebody that swore to implement to uphold the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and you, you, we need to go on strike, just needs to go on strike, we need to shut down the country for you to implement, for you to do what you swore. The very first day you, were sworn, uh, you, you became a governor, you swore that you are going to implement, you are going to uphold the provisions of the Constitution, and then someone went to court, got judgment, served you over two years ago, and you refused, you simply ignored it. Now, because the country was shut down, with all that we are experiencing today, that is, you now, you, you just woke, woke up from your slumber and say you are going to implement next month. It's so unfortunate. So what happens, what happens well, if, no. it's not, if it doesn't no. happen? Is, the strike isn't going to be called up or something? I, the information I, I heard from one year that the, the strike was called off early this morning. Oh, okay. So that is a, that's a cheering news. The strike was called off early this morning. So well, that, that's to tell you that uh, members of Jusun, I, I, I do not hope brief for them anyway. They are not saying we want to kill this country. Mm. They are only saying do the right thing. And that's why, that's why we, we, we are working with them. That's why we are supporting them. I personally, that's why I'm supporting them. Okay. So can can you say for a fact that it has been called off this this morning? Yes, I I think I got the news while while uh, coming to the studio this morning. Uh, it was reported on AIT mm. and then, um, Ray Power that the strike had been. And that's good okay. news. Then. That's that's, that's really good news. I, mm. I, I think that's good news for a lot of Nigerians mm. having you know having the country shut down all of that stuff. But my 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 my, my question before I, you know where I wrap up the show is. What happens if next month we do not see an implementation? Does it mean we're going to have mm. another strike action or something what else is going to be done? What, what, cause I don't know, like it's in the case of ASU, we keep having mm -hmm. ASU going back and forth on strike and all, strike and all mm. of that. So all that situation keep doing that. Is that what we're going to see, you know, with the judiciary? Uh, uh, first of all, I want to be optimistic. Okay. I, want, I want to just give them the benefit of doubt that by next month, okay. there will be implementation and um, senior lawyers will involved. Uh, the chief judge of the trade Commission and every other person. So modalities, I want to believe that they worked out some modalities. Mm. But if at the end of the day, nothing happens, well, this is Nigeria, anything goes. But mm. if at the end of the day, nothing happens, I can't go brief for Jusun. I know they will do the need for. Okay. Thank you so thank much you for so coming much. on the show this thank morning. You. And thank you guys for joining us on the conversation this morning. Don't forget, you can be a part of the conversation. You can watch it on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. And also, you can be a part of the community. Just follow TOS TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And also, subscribe to TOS TV Network on YouTube so you don't miss out on the amazing lineups that we have there for you. Thank you again. My name is Adesu. I'll see you. And I am Mesafo Ajinomo. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day ahead.